Hi guys. Okay, this video is to explain you the most important exercise in the homework number three. It's related to the volume back solution with a continuous framework, well, it's discrete and continuous. And I will, I will go through the details of the exercise. By this time, some of you are completely okay with the solution and you understand it completely, but others I know you are having uh, difficulties and I hope this exercise helps you to understand the details, the main details in the solution. You still need to go through the algebra because the exercise is very long and I will not be able to solve it completely, but it will give you a very important highlights on the solution for the exam and the, and the whole topic of subgame Nash equilibrium. Okay, I'll go through the, to the exercise now and explain you in detail and the aspects of it, okay? This is exer the exercise, is chapter 16, exercise number 8, and the story goes like that. Consider the following market game. An incumbent firm called Firm 3 is already in an industry. Two potential entrants called Firm 1 and 2 can each enter the industry by paying the entry cost of 10. Firm, the first Firm 1 decides whether to enter or not. Then after observing Firm's one choice, Firm 2 decides whether to enter or not. Every firm, including Firm 3, observes the choices of Firm 1 and 2. After this, all the firms in the industry, including Firm 3, compete in a Cournot oligopoly game where they simultaneously and independently select quantities. The price is determined by the inverse demand curve that is P is equal to 12 minus Q, where Q is the total quantity produced in the industry. Assume that the firm produced at no cost in this game. Thus, if firm I is in the industry and produces QI, then it earns a gross profit of 12 minus Q multiplied by Q in the Cournot phase. Remember that firm 1 and 2 have to pay an extra fixed cost of 10 to enter the industry, okay? That's the story. And if we put this in a game, in a graph, it will be a sequential game. And that, I can almost work, yeah. And this will be the game, okay? Now we have the game represented. Firm 1 is decided to enter or not. Then second, it says in the story that second one that will decide is Firm 2 to enter or not to enter. And if the Firm 1 doesn't enter, then Firm 2 has to decide again if it will enter or not, okay? In the end, Firm 3 is in the market. So if everybody enters, then we have this sub-game that we have three players. And it's a Nash equilibrium with three players. And this is gonna be a sub game. If firm one doesn't firm one enters and two doesn't enter, then we have a Nash equilibrium with two games, with two with two best responses, and we have to solve it uh, to fold it back. Okay. And in this again is the same. But in this case, one is not entering, but two is entering. And in, in the last case, is where nobody enters and just the firm three stays in the, in the market as a monopoly. Okay, this is a best response function. Those are Nash equilibriums, as you can see. And this is a best response. That is the most important part of the exercise. Not everything that is solved simultaneously or continuously has to do with Nash. Sometimes we just have best responses, okay? Um, we need to roll back the solution, and the most important thing to do that is to identify subgames in the game, okay? There are seven subgames in this game. That is the first one. In this subgame, we have three players, three best responses, and that one is two best responses, two players, and then that one is also two players and two best responses. The last one is just, there is no Nash, it's just a best response solution, okay? 
If we want to roll back this solution, we have to solve every single subgame in the final stage. Solve it, get the quantities, that is the equilibrium, and substitute those in the utility functions. Those utility functions are the money that represents all the, all the solution, and then we can roll it back to the side on the early stages of the game, okay? So we are gonna do that. We are gonna solve every single subgame. This is a Nash with three players. This is a Nash with two players. Another Nash with two players and a best response. And when we do that, we are gonna solve, find the equilibrium quantities, and then substitute those in the payoff function. This is a very important step because usually when you are solving these type of exercises that are long enough, then you get desperate, or I don't know why, but then you just get the quantities and fold the game. And actually that's a mistake because to fold a game, you need the payoff of the strategies, not just the strategies in the equilibrium, okay? There's another subgame. There is another subgame, and that's the final subgame. There are seven subgames in the game. That's a typical question sometimes in the exam. Okay, we are gonna focus on one subgame to see what we do step by step. We have three players here. We have three best responses. Three best responses. And then we solve these best responses simultaneously. And when we solve the simultaneous uh, solution of these best responses, we get the quantities one, two, and three. With these three quantities, we substitute them in the original payoff function to get the best payment we can get in equilibrium. Those are P1, P2, and P3. But the difference with this and this is that the solution of equilibrium is now considered. Okay? So we must substitute Q1, Q2, and Q3 in the payoff function to be able to fold back the solution and roll it back to the to the root nodes at the beginning in the game, okay? That's the step you usually forget. Now having the game again, we have this solution, we substitute and we get the best responses. We get the Nash equilibrium, best responses, substitute and fold back the three. And this is two players, two players and one player. Then when we do that, we get this, those are the payoff that are related to the equilibrium strategies all along the game, okay? And now looking at this is, is firm number two, uh, the next in the game. So we see that if he is gonna choose A or N, so we'll pay attention to the payoff function of firm number two. And in this case, it's gonna, if he chooses A, the payment is gonna be minus one. And if he chooses N, it's gonna be zero. So he's gonna choose, the, this frame is gonna choose zero, uh, N. He's gonna go for N strategy. That is a payment of zero. It's better than minus one. In the lower node, it's the same. It's the alternative of choosing A, a or N. And that one is gonna compare between choosing six or zero. So this firm number two is gonna choose A. That's the best possible outcome. So we roll back the solution at the very beginning and now it's just firm one to decide. And the firm one to decide, when, when she has to decide, she's gonna compare the payments for firm one and for firm one, okay? And if you have this, then you're gonna compare this pi one, that's a payment from one. So you choose, the this room is gonna choose A because six is higher than zero. And this is the way you solve this game, okay? So you have to practice this one. You have to do this exercise. You have to go through the math and solve it completely. The book has a hint, but a hint like that would not appear in any other exercise. So the best thing you can do is to go through the details of the exercise and solve it completely. If you solve it, or you hand it in the homework with the hint. Okay, I hope this helps for the, for the practice and for the material for the next second partial exam. Okay, see you in class, guys.
eating